Hello everyone, welcome to another lecture for 2090. So what I want to do today is really get down the structure of argumentative based paragraphs. This is going to be kind of the foundational structure for a lot of what you're going to be writing in this course, whether it's essay format or even just a informal response. So I want to get down a couple ideas about the topic sin, support synthesis. So we're talking about the Tolman model. In terms of just like a generic kind of idea, it's been described as like the stoplight paragraph or the burger paragraph or blah, 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 right? There's a lot of different uh, synonyms. So what is it? Well, it's a template model, recipe, whatever, to give you a formula, right? To give you somewhere to start, a structure to help you build strong paragraphs. Once you learn a structure, you can, of course, create many variations of the model. But the stoplight paragraph, or what's academically called the Tolman model, is really uh, the kind of beginning to the, of how we can develop your writing and strengthening your writing tools. What we're really doing is focusing on all the genres, you know, that we're writing, you know, expository writing, analytical, informative, evaluation based writing. So all the different kind of important genres that we're writing for this class. So what is it? Well, we have kind of a formula and this goes back to the Tolman model of claim that a warrant, right? So you state your opinion, you give us, you know, specific ideas, then you synthesize. You can't just say, okay, I believe, uh, let, let me think of just a generic one. So like, I believe, um, uh, let's see, what, what would be a good argument I hear all the time. So like, I believe marijuana should be legal because it's not really that dangerous. Well, it's like, okay, well, so what, right? Where's your proof, right? Why is, so what, right? You know, there's all these things that you could do, right, to explain your argument. So. It breaks down between claim, data, warrant, and that's the kind of important idea. You can't just give me a claim and data, right? Obviously, when we're just arguing person to person, that's fine. But in the academic setting, we need that synthesis stage. We need that analysis. We need that connection. You need, you need to show us why the claim and then the evidence really matter and really prove your point. So that's an important aspect because most of the time we argue, you know, if we're arguing just back and forth, a lot of times, you know, when we're arguing with our friends or family or whatever, loved ones, we're really just stuck on the first stage, right? Maybe we'll do the second stage if we need to, but, you know, we don't really go on in everyday argument with this one. In the academic setting, we need to really focus on that so what idea. So again, you make a claim, right? It has to be arguable, right? Especially for our class, there could be an interpretation based. This is the most important aspect, of course, of a paragraph and of an essay itself, right? A thesis statement, a topic sends argument, all that stuff, right? So strong claims often are complex sentences, right? That's going to be an important aspect that I always see with people's writing is like the first sentence of every paragraph is just this like, blank statement, right? It should be a good specific argument. We have a lot of good transitional words that help with argumentation, right? You know, help with kind of counter argument or contrasting and so forth. So let's just look at just a, a just, just generic claim and then we'll kind of go beyond, right? Although liches and other Six Flag parks are a lot of fun, Disneyland is the best amusement park because there's too much to do in a single day, right? Okay, well, good clear claim. We're, we still need evidence to back this up, right? But it's a good reason, right? Here's the reason, and here's the claim, right? So in that sentence, we have claim and then reason. We don't have data yet. We have no, we don't have specific evidence, but we have a reason with the claim. We can also do it in terms of literature. So you could start off with something saying, like, let's say we're analyzing Romeo and Juliet. Well, many characters in Romeo and Juliet play a role in the teenager's tragic deaths. Friar Lawrence is the most responsible for the early demise. Okay, well, now you have to prove that Friar Lawrence is the most responsible. So you have some sort of, and again, notice the while, although, right, good buildup of contradictions, counter arguments, and so forth, right? So we have clear ways that we could interpret or we can make an evaluation right here's a clear evaluation this is the best here it's an analytical statement there's no judgment here you're you now have to prove interpretation based that friar lawrence is the most responsible so what do we do we need reason sentences we need data we need evidence we need textual evidence support all that right so and it comes in many forms, right? Direct quotes, of course, in this case, will help for us, right? Direct quotes from the movies, direct quotes from the 
literature. You want to paraphrase, you know, info from a source. Of course, secondary sources are important for this um, class. You know, you need to show me how that, you know, that you can do academic research and literature it's part of the university requirements. Give me facts, testimonials, what have you, right? You know, so we can have kind of, um, again, example for this claim, right? So you have to prove that Disneyland's the best. You can say the rides are spectacular since they're not just regular roller coasters. Uh, the shows are entertaining because they add effects to the performances. You know, very generic, but very clear, right? Um, of course, if you're writing this paper for our class, I would want even more specifics, but it's fine, right? And again, you know, this is where we join transitional words and use transitional words to help move from idea to idea, right? Our first point, our next point, our final point, and so forth, right? And that helps build progression and so forth. Every reason statement must have at least one synthesis sentence, so you still need to synthesize. And in many cases, you may need several words. For even one reason. So what do I mean by synthesis? Well, this is the overarching kind of analytical idea that ties everything together. You explain how the claim and data work. You elaborate on how the data, um, and then, of course, explain how the data supports the claim, how the data and the claim are working together, and so forth. So it's an essential aspect of academic writing. So the synthesis ends or warrants, right, are specific, right? They show your logical and critical thinking skills, of course, right? They expand on the information presented. You know, in the reason sense, of course, I said they connect the data to the claim. So strong warrants are crucial for argumentation because that is what the difference between just, you know, general arguments that we get into every day versus, you know, academic arguments, right? Really showing how and why and so what, why should I care, all these kind of important ideas. So here, remember the reason where the rides are spectacular. So now you can even be specific, right? Space Mountain and Fundamental Roller Coasters make my heart race with speed and theatrics. And I like this thing along towards the small world, right? The new Snow White show includes great music and fireworks, which are fascinating to watch, right? So we get a little bit more of a f aspect. Now, you always want to tie everything together, even in a paragraph. So your last sentence should even further synthesize. And this is why you typically need more than one synthesis sentence. There should be something about why I should care as a reader. Um, the last sentence of every paragraph should really talk about why these ideas are important. Uh, again, ask that so what question. Uh, what should a person conclude based on the paragraph's examples? There should be, again, some sort of final overview, some sort of final synthesis that wraps everything up, that connects everything together. So you could even just a simple sentence like all in all, Disneyland is a superior amusement park, right? Connecting back to that topic sentence and showing some sort of concluding idea. Again, I'm using this example because it's just a very generic paragraph, but you could, you know, follow, I think, the, the formula. So when we look at it, right, we, we have our claim, we have our data, we have our synthesis, then we have our claim, or excuse me, our evidence, then synthesis, and then overall conclusion. So if you just put it all together, although liches and other six flag parks are fun, Disneyland is the best amusement park because there's too much to do in a single day. All right, again, now prove it. First, the rides are spectacular because they're not just regular roller coasters. Okay, well, so what? Space Man and Thunder Mountain roller coasters make my heart race, and I like to sing along with It's a One, or It's a Small World. Next, the shows are entertaining because they add effects to the performance. Okay, well, how so? Prove it. So what? The new show with Snow White includes great music and fireworks, which are fascinating to watch. Again, notice how this writer doesn't just cut off here. You know, she goes on to say which are fascinating to watch. And then what do we do? All in all, you know, some kind of conclusionary idea. Disneyland is a superior amusement park. Connecting, of course, back to that topic sense argument. So, Again, if we delete one of these sentences, it's an incomplete academic argument, right? If we take one of these out, it's very generic, right? There's no specifics, right? When we add and synthesize, we're doing something. And even here, right? Even if we just take that last sentence out, it's an incomplete paragraph. There's no so what, there's no conclusion, right? And so it's something that academic argumentation requires, right? That kind of conclusionary idea. So here's a more full-fledged, uh, analytical paragraph based on, again, a student's interpretation of Romeo and Juliet. Now, this is in the final stage, so I want you to look at, and I wanted to start off with a very simple paragraph, and now look at a very analytical-based paragraph. 
So here's our topic sins. While many characters in Romeo and Juliet play a role in a teenager's tragic deaths, Friar Lawrence is the most responsible for their early demise, which is significant since it establishes how religion is an unhelpful institution in this play. So notice how a huge analytical argument here. So the student has to prove that Friar Lawrence is most responsible, but also that it symbolizes religion is unhelpful. So we see a thematic idea as well as an analysis of a character. So again, very simple transition. First, Friar Lawrence performs the after wedding ceremony without the parents' knowledge, showing the, that religion can defy the law, right? So immediately we're giving our first example and analyzing. And here's our warrant. By marrying the two, so now we're explaining the data and the argument. By marrying the two very young teenagers and not telling the parents, the friar is directly contributing to the events that caused their deaths. Had he talked to the parents, Romeo and Juliet may have lived. Next, and so again, a full-fledged paragraph, we have our second data point. The friar also continues hiding the truth even when Juliet's parents are planning another wedding for her. Again, notice the transition. Not talking to Juliet's parents at this point puts Juliet in a horrible situation where she must take desperate actions to avoid having two husbands. Again, notice how we that's not a conclusion. That's just a synthesis. So now what do we need to say? Clearly, because Friar Lawrence never tells Romeo and Juliet's parents about the wedding, and he performs the actual, I don't know why there's space there, and he performs the actual wedding ceremony, he is the most responsible adult who contributes to their deaths, revealing that religious leaders are not as moral as they should be within this play. Right? Perfect claim, data, synthesis, data, synthesis, and then overarching conclusionary synthesis. So it's a very important formula that really helps just build argumentation. There's a lot of ways that you could expand, and this is why I have this paragraph second, because it's a much more sophisticated paragraph. This student, you know, really tried to analyze the meaning of a character as well as the meaning of religion within the play. And again, it's based on interpretation. You could have and a different interpretation, which makes it an argument. So again, that's what's very important about writing in literature and, of course, in film, is thinking about paragraph structure in order to build those good analytical ideas. So just to reiterate, again, topic sentence, support, synthesis, those kind of important structural, foundational, formulaic senses are there for a reason. It's easy to build an argument. It's easy to sustain an argument. And it helps, right? It makes you and your writing more sophisticated. So obviously, if you have any questions, you can always email or stop by, or oh, said stop by the office, uh, post to the Canvas form or email, rather. Um, in the meantime, just good luck with all the other sounds and take care.